Do you have citrus trees that are giving you tons of blooms but don't get to fruit? And you're wondering why my citrus trees are flowering but these flowers are not pollinating. I always get this question more often from viewers like you, why my lemon is not producing fruit? I'm going to address this problem with a simple solution with you to help you get started. But I would also recommend to watch my other lemon video, No Lemon, Why My Citrus Trees Aren't Producing Fruit, because that video, the information in that video leads to the information I'm giving today. So stick with me all the way to the end. Don't click away. Be right back. Hello, happy YouTubers. This is Marcelina and welcome to our channel. I'm working here with Greg. Hey guys, how you going? Happy New Year. So what we're going to talk about today is why my lemons are always flowering but don't get fruit. This is probably one of the most asked questions we get on our comments on our channel. And okay. uh, this is a real difficult one because people want to know why their lemon tree is not blooming. Mm -hmm. And that's like going to the doctor and calling him on the phone and saying, I don't feel good, what's wrong with me? And he's going to set you up for an appointment. Mm -hmm. He's going to have you come into the office. He's going to look in your eye, look down your throat. He's going to feel your glands. He's going to take your temperature. He might do some blood work and a few other things. So there's no way you can diagnose a plant mm -hmm. with just asking a simple question and think you're going to be able to explain to them why their citrus tree isn't blooming. There is a plethora of, of reasons why this plant is producing flowers mm -hmm. but no fruit no fruit so basically there is a problems of pollination here so we come up these uh, answers guys to help you get started so the first thing that you have to look at that if you have lemons lemons are self pollinating so it pollinates itself but many people think or don't realize that even though they are still pollinating, they think that this, some of the citrus don't pollinate in other cases. So, okay, you have your citrus flowering, but... The flowers are dropping off dropping and they're not off. producing any fruit. <laughs> or, they, the or, they get, or they get a little, tiny, uh, a little tiny fruit, it turns yellow, and then it falls off. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. That means that it didn't get pollinated. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. particular blossom did not get pollinated. And a lot of times... People will have their citrus plant will bloom mm -hmm. and it never produces any fruit. Mm -hmm. And it's healthy, it looks great. Mm -hmm. Why isn't it producing fruit? Okay, there's a, there's a few reasons for that. So the, uh, the reason, my number one reason is age of the plant. So the plant is not matured enough. That's right, that, that is flowers. probably the second most asked question. Mm -hmm. When they ask me, why their tree is blossoming but not producing fruit. My next question is how old is the tree? Mm -hmm. How did you get it? Is it from grafting, air layering, or is it from seed? Mm -hmm. I would say 50% of the time they tell me it was from seed. <laughs> That's true because yeah. you, you have to wait for so long. Now, do you know that uh, when we had the lime, I, you know, I saw the lime producing tons of blooms. Remember that? And those flowers, did not make it because mm -hmm. one of the reason was the long period of drought. I couldn't water that plant and it's almost like we needed because it was plant because it was in the back. back of the greenhouse and out mm -hmm. of sight, out of mind. <laughs> so something also uh, your watering. You have to check your watering because water not only you know helps the plant because when you say that when they are blooming, you have to water them thoroughly. And can you explain why at least it's once, so a week. once a week? Once a week, you have to you have to water them thoroughly, and don't water them until it dries out, because you can overwater the citrus and you cause a lot of problems when you do that, from uh, root rot mm -hmm. to uh, f fungus gnats that are breeding in the soil because of the really wet soil. Keep that soil more on the dry side. You keep the fungus gnats away. Mm -hmm. So. If we're looking to induce flowers, then you can dry out your citrus. But if you want your citrus to develop fruits, you you definitely right. water them well when you they are in the blooming stage. You have, you have to remember, why do plants produce flowers in the first place? Mm -hmm. To propagate the species because they want to ensure the longevity of that plant. Mm -hmm. And when you stress a plant out by not watering it, that induces it to flowers 
to flower to produce fruit for seeds in the fruit mm -hmm. so it can continue. If you give that plant too much water, it may not bloom. Mm -hmm. It has, in nature, it goes through a period of, of drought and that causes it, that signals that plant to start blooming. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people said that, you know, you might have, you need bees to pull, pollinate lemon. <laughs> lemon doesn't need bees, but it helps, right? Well, here's, sometimes they help because a lot of times if you have a self-pollinating blossom mm -hmm. and there's no wind, mm -hmm. the, the pollen isn't, isn't being uh, uh, utilized, okay? So you have to either have some wind or pollinators even though it's a self-pollinating plant. So there was a guy on YouTube years ago, he, had, he was a tomato grower mm -hmm. and he used to, his video was called Spank Your Plants. <laughs> <laughs> or beat them. He said spank them. And what he actually did is he rolled up a piece of newspaper uh -huh. and he would sit there and just tap that base of the stalk of the plant, causing that plant to shake and vibrate to pollinate those those tomato blossoms. So, so that, that works. Yes, it does. It does work. <laughs> Even though it is self-pollinating, you cannot expect that it pollinates itself without uh, the help of yeah. Water and so sometimes, air. if we're if we're going through that, I actually do. Even though it's self pollinating, I do help the plant from time to time, and I take a little Q-tip, and yeah. I just go from flower to flower to flower and pollinate them. And pollinate okay. it because yeah. the the self pollinating it has the female and the, the male, but if there is no activity going on, there is uh, the mm -hmm. pollination never exists. Can I give you a joke? <laughs> oh boy. Is that poll is is pollination? It's almost like ovulation, right? If you have tons of women but no men so there's no pregnancy <laughs> there's yeah. no pregnancy happens right that's right <laughs> just on my opinion <laughs> so so the age of the plant that you have to look look it up you know because there might be a first flush you know telling you that the plant is going to reach that maturity but it's not matured enough to develop the fruit so you have to look at the age of the plant and then also uh, the drought you know the water so if if you want to increase blooming, then you have to reduce the water. But if it is too long of drought, it also affects the flowers because the flowers dry out, right? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they cannot complete the the development. Well, some yeah. of the other some of the other reasons uh, your plant may not be doing what you want it to do is because of the container that you have it in. Container, yeah, that's true. If it is uh, if it is small. And then Small, or if it's in a black, one of those black plastic nursery pots that a lot of times you'll buy them from, uh, the soil is probably depleted. It's probably not a real good soil to begin with, mm -hmm. and there's probably poor nutrients in it, but it's also probably not allowing the roots to expand out and to breathe, mm -hmm. and you've probably got a root bomb problem. That's mm -hmm. real important. So take that plant, pull that pot off, look at those roots, and if it's all circling around, you've got to get that plant into another container that can breathe, and you want to get one that is self pruning the roots. Self pruning the roots. Yeah, yes, it needs um, oxygen, big yeah, time. But the container is also uh, rest for nutrients deficiency because of the soil content, and it's not the same as when you grow them on the ground. That it's more. You know, well, even sometimes plants that are in the ground need nutrients because the soil is not always conducive to uh, to good root structure. So, the, so we we have that we cover that. Uh, how about the temperature? Does temperature affecting the pollin the citrus trees sure. to pollinate? Sure, sure. They like they ha they have an optimum temperature. They want to be between seventy five and eighty five degrees. Mm -hmm. And if you're below that, then you're not going to get a, a real good fruit production or, or blossoming. Do you notice that in the spring when it starts spring citrus starting to blossoming but actually those flowers don't develop the fruit because it's that's true that's true with the lime and maybe some of the calamansi but with the Meyer lemon during the summertime is their growth phase mm -hmm. and they don't start to blossom until late fall and right now all of our Meyer lemon trees are in full blossom right now and it's December and it's you know a cold season mm -hmm. it's cooler right now so and then during the summertime is when they start growing their fruit mm -hmm. and in the fall we pick the fruit that's been developing all summer long, and then they start to get ready for blossoming for late fall. Mm -hmm. That's true. a little different schedule so than some of the other. Te temperature is also yeah. a part of the absolutely. And then 
for the fertilizer, the um, Citratone is probably one of the best ones out there for, mm -hmm. for that. So you apply that on this in the active growth? Mm -hmm. About once every six weeks. How about this is? This is of the citrus also affecting well, the blossom? Well, uh, we're, we're, I'm writing a book right now on, on different types of diseases and insects that uh, can affect your, your citrus plants. But the, uh, the fungus is probably one of the most common diseases, the greasy spot. <coughs> and uh, the fungus gnats are probably the worst insects, mm -hmm. which is one of the reasons why we have that fan going on in there is to keep the flying insects from being able to land on our citrus plants. It is, mm -hmm. It's too strong for them to be able to fly in. Yeah. <coughs> so if you grow citrus in the uh, greenhouse or in your house, you you need to have activity in that area. You need an external you need good, good air circulation. Like you, you need a, you need air or put a fan so that the air can knock off those pollen and then mm -hmm. become seeds. So that is also so you have the AIDS, you have the temperature, you have the long period of droughtness, and you also the disease also affecting the citrus from not developing to fruit. Mm -hmm. Because one of the most important why you grow citrus is to have your tree, fr you know, produce fruit. Produce fruit. Right. And if there is no fruit, so what, what, you know? Now, how about other citrus? Because lemon is self pollinating. How about the cross pollination like the tangelo? Um, tangelo, our, our tangelos have not been very good at blossoming right now. It's a very hard uh, citrus for us to get the blossom. So they don't pollinate itself. So no. you need to have a cross pollination. You need bees. Right. The insects and also you need to plant uh, different cultivars. You need, you need with different the cultivars. Same the same exactly. Species. Yeah. Right. Right. So that's what you need to you need to plant. Now, uh, the the wind, you know, the wind is another stimuli that will help the pollination. So how far is the distance <laughs> for the you know, well, they the say up. They say up to a hundred feet, but I wouldn't feet. trust that very often. I would. I would say within twenty-five feet would be uh -huh. the maximum. Uh, I, I'd like to keep them even closer. I like closer. to keep them about six feet away from one another. Yeah, because if it is too far, you know, the yeah. bees has to. You know, bees have to travel that far to get to your citrus, unless you have your neighbor. You know, have mm -hmm. grown, you know, tons of citrus. Beehives. Yeah. Yeah. So, do we cover? Uh, well, the other thing, the last thing I want to talk about is using neem oil as a preventative measure from keeping mealybugs and your white flies and your aphids off of your citrus trees. All three of those insects will attack your plant and the, uh, the, the, the uh, fungus gnats, they like to get down in the soil, they lay their eggs and then their little larvae go down there and attack your root system and you may be doing everything right. Mm -hmm. and you cannot figure out why your leaves on your citrus plant are turning yellow, not producing blossoms, or dropping fruit. It's because it's under attack and it's under stress. Mm -hmm. So you know, your plant's going to start turning yellow leaves and dropping all of its leaves. Get some neem oil and uh, treat the leaves, and then get some hydrogen peroxide and put uh, one, was that one tablespoon of hydrogen peroxide per quart, yeah, yeah. Per quart of water, and that will, and then pour that in there, and water your plant with that. That will help give oxygen to the roots and I also. Always, I, it that's will, what I always do in yeah, the morning when yeah. I water my citrus. And it, it so, is important. So you, if, you, if you want more information, guys, I would uh, encourage you to watch other lemons. Uh, uh, one of the video or two videos that you that will help you. We'll put the, put the why, I'll put yeah, the link will, above in the card. The, Have you yeah. talked to them about Cashier Green's website yet? Oh, so this video, guys, is <laughs> this video, guys, is, is sponsored by Cashew Green. So if you are looking for tropical plants, there is a great discount of any plant purchase, and this is only we have our citrus plants. plants. Yeah, this is only if you want to get calamandin, lime, or Meyer lemon, we have those on our website, cashewgreens.com. It's a brand new website, and uh, we're loading new plants up there every single day. So check I'm gonna, them out. If you look at the link below. I'm going to put a code down there, a discount code, and you write to, when you go to your checkout at our website, you put that in there and you'll get the discount. This is only for the viewers on YouTube, our YouTube channel. Nowhere else will you be able to find this discount code. So get advantage of the code so you can get the And did you, did you ask anybody to subscribe yet? 
I did that in the beginning. You did that in the beginning. Okay. <laughs> so if you like this video, guys, uh, hit likes and also don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. So this is uh, this is for now. Time to wrap up. All right. We've got Greg Steven signing off. Marcelina, no. No Peace telling out. where okay. it goes. <laughs> Driving through days and nights. Won't stop for traffic lights.